college and then go in. Ye, my people, come out from among them. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14. So we understand this is the last call before the return of Christ. And just for your information, this year it is 493 years ago when Martin Luther nailed the 95 pieces onto the church of Wittenberg. I've been to that church, I've seen the door. And from that time, God has given revival after revival. In the 1,000 years of dark ages, no family, no home had the Bible. Just no home, no family had the Bible. Only the clergy, only the priests, but no German, no British, no one had the Bible in their home. But since the Reformation, the Bible was translated into so many languages. And now everybody can read the Word of God and enjoy it. At the same time, we have to say the Bible is being interpreted into so many different ways. And then when we come to the message of the hour, there are so many different interpretations. I'm a simple man of God, but I never would stand a compromise. Not a single time did I compromise. Not a single time. The Word of God remains the Word of God. And I'm not here to please anyone. I'm here to please God and to share His Word in the original form. But just to show you from the time of Reformation, there was revival after revival. Not only Martin Luther or Swingley or Calvin or Schwenkfeld and many others, but also in the following revivals. There was a John Wesley from which the denomination comes, everybody knows about the denomination which originates with John Wesley. Everybody knows the denomination which originates with John Smith. Everybody knows the denomination which originates with many Zemos. And all, all denominations we have today, they originate from a revival, and they are connected to a certain person God was using at a certain time in a special way. John Wesley for the Methodists. John Smith for the Baptists. Menosimos for the Mennonites. William Booth for the Salvation Army. Everyone who was used at a certain time in a special way did also start a denomination or people started a denomination after the ministry of a man used of God in a special way. But then when it comes to the Pentecostal revival, there is no one that you actually can attach 
to that revival. The Holy Spirit fell all over the earth, not only in Los Angeles, at Azusa Street, in Germany, in Kassel, everywhere on earth. The Holy Spirit fell at the same time in the different countries. So no one can say, this is the man or this is the man. It was the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit Amen. moving, moving again after so many years. And then the restoration of the gifts has taken place and also of the ministries. But then, I have to say this, even after the mighty blessings which are now over a hundred years ago when it first started in 1906 and also in the past times many were filled with the Holy Spirit but here is the problem they remind in their own teachings remind in their own teachings. And by the way, in 1964, when I was preaching in Rome, everybody knows where Rome is, and everybody knows where the Pope is and the Vatican is. I was preaching in Rome in July 1964, and I knew the man, David Duplessis personally, how many knew the name? David Duplessis. They called him Mr. Pentecost. Mr. Pentecost. And we stayed in the same home, in the same home with Dr. John McTurney. And he went to the Vatican and prayed for the Catholics to receive the Holy Spirit. Then returning and rejoicing that this and that person, even Cardinal Bayard, had received the Holy Spirit. But here we are facing a very, very big problem. If it's the true Holy Spirit, then John 16 will apply. When the Spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all the truths. If somebody today is filled with the same Holy Spirit, the apostles were saved, and the New Testament church at the beginning, you will have the same revelation. You will believe the same apostolic teaching. You will not remain in your traditional teachings, but you will return to the Bible teachings and line up with the Word of God. You cannot have your own ways and make it to heaven. That's impossible. This is God's time for God's people to be back to come back to the Word of God and line up with every scripture and just believe and practice as the Word of God says. Now to the promises. I will give you the scriptures. In the prophet Malachi, in the fourth chapter, our Lord gave the promise that he would send someone like Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord would pray. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6. And all ministers know Malachi 3 applies to the ministry of John the Baptist where it says Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall 
prepare my way before me. This is confirmed in Matthew 11 verse 10, in Mark chapter 1 verse 2, in Luke chapter 7 verse 27. So in the New Testament, our Lord confirmed the ministry of John the Baptist as the fulfillment of Malachi 3 and also of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. But two thousand years have come and gone, and the day of the Lord has not yet been. If you wish to know about the day of the Lord, you must read Isaiah chapter 13 from verse 6. You must read Job 2. You must read the scriptures that speak about the day of the Lord. You must read 2 Thessalonians 2. You must read 2 Peter chapter 3. You must read all the scriptures pertaining and speaking of the same subject and never try to interpret. Just believe that God fulfills His word. First, He makes promises. And when the time comes, He fulfills what He promised. So we understand from the Holy Scriptures that before the day of the Lord comes, and maybe I shall read to you from the prophet Joel that you would know what happens before the day of the Lord comes. Joel chapter 2 verse 31. The sun shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord will come. So the Holy Scripture precisely tells us what will take place just at the introducing of the day of the Lord. And then you have to go to Revelation to know when the day of the Lord is going to be introduced. You can read it in Revelation <coughs> chapter 6 verse 12 and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. So at the time when the sixth seal will be manifested, the day of the Lord will be introduced, which will be a day of rest, a day of judgment. As we read, sun will turn into darkness, the moon into blood, and the stars will fall from heaven, and people will cry to the mountains, fall upon us, and hide us from the wrath of him that sits upon the throne. 